Hello and welcome to hobby vlog number 157. Now the girls return this week and the beginning of this video is a little bit different because it was a mad rush for me to build something awesome for Rosie. So uh, it's not really part of the core theme of this channel but don't care, that's what I did and uh, very pleased with it and she loves it, which you'll see. So anyway, you've got that to look forward to. A couple of other bits and pieces, I've been working towards a few of my projects. I'm still feeling a little bit down, a little bit low on motivation uh, and uh, I'm slowly but surely grinding my way back up, uh, but I'm not forcing it as I've been saying for the past few weeks, uh, this is a hobby, not a, not a job. Uh, I'm getting a bit bored of saying that. I hope that I return to my usual energetic self soon enough. Uh, but that's just life and uh, it's been a bit of a difficult one. Rosie's been quite sick this week. She's slowly getting better, thankfully. Um, but yeah, all those things do impact us, don't they? So anyway, I will stop rambling now. I really hope you enjoy this video. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. I do reply to every single one of them and I love reading them. They are really in inspirational to me. So, uh, so don't be shy. Uh, do say hello. And anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you again at the end. Right, so I finished doing my cutting. I did make a bit of a mistake and break the top, but that's fine, I'm gonna cut that down a bit. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to start to glue this together. Now again, it's not perfect. It's gonna take a little bit of fettling to get this right. Um, so if, you, if I turn it around, you can see that if I line it up here, it's gonna go quite a lot over over here. So what I'm gonna to have to do is make use of some cocktail sticks and then bend it because this stuff does bend, so it's okay. Bend it into place and make sure that I get it all lined up. So the funny thing is, is when I bend this into place, you can't see, but over here, I'm gonna to need to bend that side out a bit. So this is gonna be a little bit of an interesting, interesting challenge. What I'm gonna do is put some cocktail sticks, drop one on the floor. Just put some cocktail sticks around in a staggered pattern all the way around the edge. So I'll get that done. Oh yeah, so now that I've got cocktail sticks all around, what I'm gonna try and do is and I don't know how well this is going to work because I'm trying this for the first time on live camera, obviously. But I'm going to try and line it up, including with the bending, and hope that the cocktail sticks will allow it to be held in place. Now, I have also made a mistake, as you can see, because I left the uh, overhangs a bit wrong, but I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to be trimming this down quite a lot anyway. So I'm gonna get this done. I'll probably put some music over while I'm doing this because it's not making very nice noises. But it does seem, actually, you know what? Don't need to put music over. I think I'm done. It seems to have worked. So if we look at that, you can see that it kind of lines up. It's not great there, but I can trim that bit quite easily. The rest of it is pretty cool, pretty good. Apart from that bit. There we are. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna get my grabby glue. I'm not gonna be using a hot glue gun in this build at all, so I don't mind the fact that I'm gonna use this. And I'm basically gonna run this all the way around on the inside. Like so, just squirt it in there. And I'll probably do a bit from the outside, from the other side as well, so I get two beads running around. That hindsight being perfect, I should have put that glue in before I started doing the, the uh, pressing down. But hey, what I can now do, I hope, is put this in place. Onto the spikes. And with the glue. There we are. So 
So there's going to be a little bit of trimming to be done, but not very much. And you can see that we've got a really nice stepped effect. And if I get my little miniature, now all of this will be smoothed off to be all sorts of other stuff. So if I put a little miniature on, you can see that you definitely can get up those steps as a miniature. And it's going to give some really nice elevation from the top. Like I said, I'm not yet decided whether I'm going to make use of this or not. Um, and uh, if I do, I might crenellate it or break it a little bit. I might make it into, a, might actually cut this up into strips and just glue it in places just as a really kind of broken down wall. But yeah, there we are. I'll let that dry and then I'll come back to it and, uh, and trim these edges off, trim the on the outside a bit, but that's going to need to sit for a day now to dry and to, to, to finish gluing and then, and then yeah, we'll go on to the next step, but we've started. Really got a little bit of an amphitheatre look going to it, hasn't it? Well, as you can see, I'm outside of my garden and I'm stood by a tree. And my plan is to make a tree house for Rosie. I've been thinking about this for a fair while. And I was just in one of our outbuildings clearing up a load of rubbish, old windows from the uh, school and uh, various other bits and pieces. And I realised now is the time because I'm going to be getting rid of a lot of the materials I would use to make a, um, make a tree house. So I'm going to do it. So what I've got is I've got a straight edge here. I've got a level and I'm going to try and build it so it will come out a fair way I think but try and build it so that I can have some beams sat on top of these branches going across here and across there behind here you can see there's another branch that goes out this this tree is particularly ideal um, and then there'll be like an area where Rosie can sit and uh, and what have you on this side and also with the tree growing up through it I might be overdoing it as I always do but I'm going to give it a go. So my plan is to make use of some spray paint to find out where we've got roughly got a flat. So you can see that if I, well you can't see because you can't see the bubble, but what I'm doing here is trying to find where the flat between this branch and that branch is. And then I'll make a mark and a mark and then I'll go over here and find out whether that's flat. And if it's not, I might need to build it up a bit, but that will then give me the plan to start working out how high my legs are going to need to be and then I can start cutting and at the very least what I like to do today um, which is a nice Sunday afternoon beautiful Sunday afternoon last uh, Sunday in October is try to get uh, the frame done and maybe some of the floor nailed into place so I'm gonna do my measuring and I'll bring you along uh, for the next step when I get to it Like it's a good progress getting materials together. One of the early decisions I've made is I want to make use of old materials from the old roof. I could obviously go out and buy loads of wood but first this is what I'm throwing away and secondly I don't want to waste money on this really because I want to be able to uh, spend money on other things. So the problem with a lot of this I'm just in the process of, hey Lily, is there's lots of old nails. So what we're having to do is come along with this awesome tool. I've not seen these anywhere but in Bulgaria, like a hammer axe. Dunk, that went a long way away, but go and get that. I don't want metal on my on my lawn. There we are, got it. But I'm having to go along and remove all of the nails out of this old wood. So I'm getting there, not got far to go. I've managed to get two out, I've managed to get well, no, I need one more bit of wood actually to finish this first bit, which is building the outer frame. And then I think I'm gonna look for some planks and start trying to actually put some planks on. Um, I've got, an up, I've, I'll, I'll, once I've pulled all the nails and I've got this first frame, I'll bring you along, show where I'm at, and then we'll have to think about the actual, about putting some floor on. So what I've realized I need to do before I actually try to do the middle beam, so I've decided I'm gonna do a, a middle beam, is I'm gonna to need to just secure both sides slightly so that I can get a level. So what I've got is a couple of these flat plates. These actually are recycled from old uh, raised beds that I made. And what I'm doing is I'm drilling a small guide hole 
And these aren't going to be permanently fixed just yet. They're just to hold it really, hopefully prevent it falling over. I'm just going to tack these in place. It's really tough wood as you can hear. It's binding out on the screws. But that's not the worst thing in the world, having tough wood. So I'm going to secure this here and I'm going to secure it at the other end as well with some uh, right, oh, right angled brackets that I've got and uh, secure, it, secure it to the branch, to the branch and to the back beam. And uh, I'm going to do the same for the back beam, which you can't see. And then when that's done, I'll be able to finish off doing the middle beam, which I have started. And then it probably is going to be run out of time time because it's not far off me having to go and start cooking Sunday dinner. But the good thing with these is they do bend a bit. But the bad thing is, as you can see, I've pulled this now off, off alignment slightly and it's wobbling a bit. So I've got the other end, secure the other end, secure the middle, and then that should be good enough for me to uh, keep working to get at least the basic framework done today. So when I've done that and got everything secure, I'll let you see what it looks like. Right then, so I've got the two, well the, the outside frame done, as you can see, and if we have a look at this little bubble, oh yes, dead centre. So I'm now umming and ahhing, I do have another upright at the back there as you can see, and I do have another beam here as you can see, but that's incredibly heavy that beam, really struggling to, to balance it, and I'm wondering whether it's actually needed in the middle or not, I can't decide at the moment. So what I'm going to do instead, while I think about that, is I'm going to start to find some planks and I'm going to decide, I'm going to just lay them across and have a look and see what it looks like. So I need about two metre long planks and I need about 10 of them. So I'm going to go have a look in the woodshed and I'll bring you along and show you what I'm dealing with in there because <laughs> it's a, a bit of a mess. But yeah, if I can get some planks on it, it's pretty solid this. It's not going anywhere that, giving it a good shake. It's not going anywhere, so I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to brace these legs a little bit more, put some uh, outriders on them. Don't eat that, Zena. You'll get sick if you eat a, a walnut. Zena, put that down. She just picked up a walnut. I'm going to go and catch her. Anyway, there we are. I'll bring you along to the woodshed when I'm going looking for some uh, planks. All right, so this is what we call the green building. And if you thought my loft was, my roof place was a mess, this has been a dumping ground for eight years of building and it's not very easy to get into. I had to clear a massive pile of lumber from here just about to gain access to this room. Big crack on a bit of wood there. But anyway, in this room, so I've got a lot of the beams from. These are all the old wood from the roof. You see there's loads and loads and loads here. So uh, if this goes well, I might make some more stuff for Rosie out of this. I don't really want to throw it away. I'd like to use it. Uh, but anyway, but I don't need any more of this now. What I need to do is get into the room which is the other end there. Now there's an open door, so I'm going to climb back out and I'll show you what that looks like. Right, so that'll need to be tidied. <laughs> it's going to be eventually. In here is even more rubbish. But as you can see, there's at least one plank there. I'm not sure how good it is. I'm going to check that out. These are more beams. I mean, I saved the entire roof. So uh, yeah, but there's one plank in there. And there's more wood here. It really is a, a tre tre treasure trove of rubbish. But if we go into the next room, which I've actually spent a little bit of time tidying, and this is what's prompted me into this craziness, because I need to be able to get, get to that hay. There's more off cuts, old windows. Those aren't long enough. I'm a bit worried I'm not going to find long enough ones, which means I'm going to have to do that middle beam. Because in here is more of the flat wood. But all the flat wood is quite short, as you can see. So I don't think it's going to really work. And then I go in here to the other end. Yeah, there's not really anything in here. There's certainly not enough to do what I need to do. So I think I'm going to have to think again. I'm going to have to do that longer, that middle beam. Unless there's some out here. No, that's not, not very good either. So I'm going to have to think again, I think I'll find another beam which isn't quite as heavy as the one I pulled out and uh, build a, a middle one and then I should be able to get enough of this which will kind of go halfway and then halfway. So not needing two metre lengths 
but needing one meter and that will be much easier to find because there's plenty of one meter planks in here. So right, let's get to it. Back to shaky cam because frankly I couldn't get a good angle. So I decided just to go with the original, original beam, as you can see. I've done three legs on it rather than two because it hasn't got the branch to stand on, to rest on. And what I'm now about to do is start putting the planks on. So I've got one plank there. It's going to go to halfway across the middle beam and then extend out there. I've got another couple here and I'm just going to keep going. So I'm going to screw these in and then go and find some more, screw them in until I have to stop to cook. Because I'm going to have to stop soon, which is a shame. But I'm making, and I've done this in a day so far. So, uh, oh look, there's, there's Zena's mummy <laughs> hopping down the, going down the lane. Um, yeah, so pretty pleased. I will, uh, I'll show you what, I get, what it looks like when I get to it. I wish I'd kind of wish I had the camera on because this was a lot of fun putting up. So what I did was I basically attached all the metalwork, all the uh, joints um, in place, apart from this end one here, which I put on once it was up. Uh, so I attached all the metalwork there and there before I lifted it in place. And then I was able to kind of do this one and then duck underneath this branch, get underneath and then do that one. It was a bit of a, a challenge. I'm glad it didn't fall because it's very heavy, but it worked. So yes, anyway, I'm going to uh, get these logs on, get these, these uh, uh, planks on now. I'm getting tired as well. It's been, it's been a good couple of hours of work this, but good fun. So I get these planks on and uh, see how much I can get before I have to go in. Well, I've run out of time, but I'm very pleased with this because solid as a rock. And I've been climbing up here, standing on this while I've been screwing these beams, these uh, planks down. They're solid as anything. So I've got a couple of gaps where I'm going to need to trim down some planks tomorrow. I will do that tomorrow now. I've got to go and cook now. I'm late <laughs> and the clock's changed. I'm even later, but I've just wanted to get it done. I've been really enjoying it. And yeah, from a uh, completely stupid, crazy, I'm going to go and build Rosie a tree house to I've half built uh, the base of a tree house. Uh, so there's going to be some minimal cutting of branches to be done as well. So she can get in like this will have to come out, uh, but I'll build a little ladder up for her to climb in. And I do want to put a window up and some walls. Not sure whether I'll do that now or or not, but that was what that was what inspired me, wasn't it? So anyway, yeah, that was a good couple of few hours work. Pretty pleased. Gonna go and have a very late dinner now. I'm exhausted, but very, very pleased. <laughs> well, it's early on uh, Tuesday morning. I've not brought my big camera down, so you're gonna have to put up with a little bit of phone footage. What I'm trying to do is get these last bits of plank in place. So I've got one more to go here and then I'm going to need to bring them this way. Now you can see I've got one here that's a bit longer because I can butt over. Uh, what I'm going to look at doing is pull this one this way a little bit from what I did last time and then fill it at the back and then fill forwards. So yeah I'm going to spend about an hour this morning I think to try and get this done if I can. Uh, very disappointed in myself. Last night I basically worked on Tawny till 3.30 this morning, so uh, I just didn't get out. I was hoping to finish this yesterday. So let's get cracking. Well then, I've finished the floor, but as you can see, there's a few bits that need to be trimmed, even for Rosie to get up here. So I've got my little uh, pruning saw, and what I'm going to do now is just trim off these bits that are right in the way. Like that one there. There you are, that's better. I'm not going to trim too much, just anything that's low and actually encroaching on the area, and anything that's dead, like that, is dead. So we'll cut that off. So I'll get this done. I was going to make my own ladder, but then I found one that the men had made a while back, which is perfect. So I've just borrowed that, and that's going to mean that she can climb up in here really easily. You can see, pretty stable. I'm not too scared sitting up here. <laughs> I'm not good with heights. Um, but I'm okay with this. There's one little bit left to do just here in the middle. There's a little gap. I need a sliver um, and there's a couple of screws that I need to replace um, but it'll be good enough for now and I better fix those things uh, over the next couple of uh, couple of days. I just want to get this done because she comes home tomorrow and I want it done before then. Uh, so yeah I'm going to get my pruning out and uh, get this ready for Rosie's return.
So I'm uh, still priming old smell. I've done the top half. Didn't actually take all that long, to be honest. So I'm hoping that right now I can finish uh, with a little bit of time before work. Not very long, 10 minutes at most. Um, so I just thought I'd do this quickly rather than sit and stare at videos. <laughs> Um, not that staring at videos is a bad thing, obviously. Thank you for staring at this video. Um, but yeah, so it's actually not been too difficult to prime, uh, which is good, particularly when you've got a big brush like this, um, which I use for my priming mostly. Um, so yeah, onwards. I know probably a lot of people are going, why aren't you using an airbrush? Well, because I'm scared of it and I've not picked it up yet. And I am going to, I promise I will. I will. And when I do, I'll film it. I still don't feel confident enough particularly to do something that I really want to be good and I'm relatively confident with how I'm going to paint this with a brush I wouldn't want to try and learn a new technique while doing something for Rosie put it that way so yeah I'll just get this painted up primed up even and then I'll bring you along show you how I'm going to do the next step probably uh, not sure when um, they arrive back today from their trip away it's another reason to want to get this done now so I can hide it again because Rosie doesn't know I've bought it. Um, it's going to be a Christmas present or Christmas surprise, if not a present. A Christmas surprise for the Rosie room. Anyway, enough rambling. I'll uh, finish getting this primed and uh, bring you back for the next step when I get to it. Right, so I've made a start on this and I've hacked out a shape. Um, and I'm having an eye ring at the moment about how I'm going to do this. And the thought I've got is I want to do it on a big, nice display base. But I'm also thinking that I might mount him onto this wooden base here. Um, and then have this be able to sit into the display base. And then I'll be able to pull it out. So if I want to play with him, he doesn't take up too much space on the battlefield. Because, yeah, it's going to be massively oversized. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue him down to this base now. And then I will basically huh, basically make this so that this, this is kind of continuous, it looks nice, um, but I'll be able to pull this and pull this off, like I said. So I'll glue this down, just use some, um, some, some uh, super glue, I think, um, or some PVA, one of the two. And then what I'll do, I won't do this on camera because it's going to make a na nasty noise. But once I've got that done and I've worked out exactly where this is going to sit, um, I'll carve this so that it looks like it's a, um, like a rocky outcrop. And then I'll, I'll um, put, the, put the rest of the scenery on top of this as well at the same time as I'm doing the base for him. So yeah, pretty happy with that. I'm glad, glad to be making use of some offcuts, which I always like to do. And uh, I'll bring you along when I've done the carving on that. It literally is, just do one bit of it, it literally is you just come in and, and tear. And that turns it into a very effective looking kind of like a rocky outcrop. So, but I won't do all of it on camera because it's nasty noise as you can hear. So I'll bring you back when I've done that and um, like I said, I'll glue this on and show you how that looks as well when that's finished. Well, it's a small thing, but I'm very excited to have received this. This is my Army of the Dead, I'll try to find the right side, my Army of the Dead dice. These have been, or well, lucky from uh, Zorba Zorb. Um, ordered these for me because they sold out so quickly in the UK, he was able to grab me a, a, a set. Uh, that was nearly 18 months ago, a long time ago now, um, and uh, we've just basically not been able to arrange for them to be to be shipped. I was hoping to, to see him a, a, a few things and actually see him in person and get them, and it just didn't happen. So he put them in the post and they arrived yesterday, and yeah, so I've still, I've still got my full house of these, very happy. Um, and thank you very much, Lucky, for getting them for me, and thank you for posting them safely and very well packed, I must say. All right, so I've carved this out. And as you can see, I've made my little dent in that, which is what I, how I'm going to uh, better fit that in. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to actually make this a little bit harder wearing and uh, improve the texture. So uh, this is a technique I've done loads and loads and loads on the channel. Um, I've got my, what I call my terrain paint, which is PVA glue mixed with normal house paint and with a dash of washing up liquid in it or dish soap if you're American. Um, just to prevent it from going off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this straight on top of my foam 
and then I won't do most of this on camera because I've done it over and over and it's very repetitive but once you put some paint on some of the terrain paint you can scatter your sand on and uh, that will give it a texture and it will also harden the outside so that it doesn't get damaged um, and then when that's dried you can paint it with the same paint again and that will give it a black coating a nice undercoat and I will also do the same on the base for the snow drive, which you can see I've glued on nicely. So I'll get that done, uh, say off camera, there's no point in showing you that over and over again, it's just the same thing. Um, and then when that's all done, uh, we'll have a look and see what we're gonna do, uh, what we're gonna do next. So I'll bring it back when we get to that stage. I've finished the uh, basic painting. What I thought I'd do is on camera, I thought I would peel off my little bit of masking and show that it worked. And it's a little bit iffy at the back here. It's not quite the curvaceous that they show on their picture. Oh, I'm going to have to stick that to everything. <laughs> However, it certainly is good enough for me. So I'll peel all this masking tape off. And then the next thing I'm going to work on is going to be the undercarriage. And then it will be a case of going to the decals, transfers, whatever you want to call it. I call them decals because that's what my dad used to call them. Um, so yeah, there we are. We have the basic colour done. And like I said, I'm pretty pleased with how it's worked out and how that looks. So yeah, so I'm gonna, I've got to paint inside. I've realised I came up here to film this and realised I hadn't painted up inside here. So I'm gonna paint inside here the same colour as the under, underneath. I don't know what it should be, and frankly you won't see it because this is going to be sat sitting um, maybe front on to the view um, on a, with wheels down. So you're not going to see that anyway, but I still want to paint it. Uh, so I'm going to paint the inside of that and then I'll get stuck into the undercarriage. And I'll bring you along when I'm assembling the undercarriage, show what it looks like. And then we'll glue them in place and uh, then it'll be decal time. So yeah, it's got lots of problems with the build. You can see just how bad the... Uh, uh, the fuselage around here is, I, I was, that's just shameful and I'm quite upset myself and I might even end up building one of these again and, and replacing it. But for now this is good, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm building it for, for my dad, not, not for any other reason, but just uh, in memory of him. So, uh, so yeah, so I've got, to, I've got to paint those and I've got to paint the insides of the engines as well, which is going to be metallic obviously, um, and the insides of the back. So uh, when I've done that and I've finished the painting properly, I'll bring you along and we'll have a look at doing the undercarriage. So I need to do a little bit more filling on this end. And the funny thing is, if you have a look, and you can't see, and I'm not going to to film it because it's just too tight, but I literally got it millimetre perfect, that last pour. It was so close to going over the edge. <laughs> so what I've decided to do is make use of some uh, clear silicon and just go with a really basic method and hope that it works and if it doesn't then I'll deal with it but uh, yeah I just want to get the final pour done because I'm right close to the end of this now so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hopefully if this works I've not used this tube for a while so I think it might have gone solid inside so I might need to uh, clean out the tube a bit so let me get that done but I'm just going to put a little bit of silicon just up here just fill in over here let that go off and then I'll do the next pour and uh, hopefully that will then be, be the last pour because on this side I'm about, on the other side I'm about, about three or four mil off. So if I just fill a three or four mil up here, then that should be okay. But I'll have to go and unblock this tube, which has gone solid on me. Actually, you know what, I can probably do it without, without the applicator. So let me see if I can do this. Yeah, just get a lump of silicon like that and then I'll position it correctly so that it doesn't end up being ugly. And then when that's gone off, which will won't be today, I'll wait 24 hours for that to go off fully. And then we'll uh, then we'll do another another pour. So I'll just do that. That should be enough to dam it, I'd have thought. Good. There we are. So yeah, hopefully that'll be enough to dam it. Uh, if it isn't, then um, I'll have resin going everywhere and I'll panic. <laughs> but it should be. Let that go off. 
and then we'll do the last pour and then we'll show you what it looks like. So this project might actually be moving finally to the, to the next step, which is pretty exciting. I can't believe that, but my uh, microphone wasn't working in the last clip, and it was a really long and cool clip, and I said lots of really funny things. If you believe that, you believe anything. <laughs> but anyway, here we are. So I'm gonna start doing these, uh, these tufts now. Um, and I'll do this in the way that I normally do it. I'll show you this quickly, and then probably do most of it off camera. So I have a, a um, plate here, which I've got PVA on, and I never rely on the um, self-adhesive properties of tufts just because I've always found them to be a little bit unreliable over time so they stick pretty well initially but they'll eventually fall off so what we're going to do is we're going to stick some of these tufts both onto the extended base and also down here actually on the giant base which you can't really see so I'll actually lift that into place why not and you can see it better it fits really nicely very pleased with that so yeah so we're going to put a load of these dead tufts on and then that's where i'll stop for now and then the next thing that i'll do will be the snow and then we'll be done which is really cool because this giant i started two months ago and then just didn't finish it anyway let's get these tufts in and then i'll bring you back for the next step which will be snow like i say when i get to them all right it's time to start hacking this up now i've not yet stuck this top bit on but that i'm using to basically decide the extent of the one largest continuous run so I have actually started this and I realized actually no I need to put the camera on so I've just trimmed off the edge here um, and what I'm going to do is going to slice down basically from around here this will be one continuous section and then I'll be able to make two or three more sections out of this so if we just start cutting like this Again, because it's a ruin, this makes it easier. You don't have to be quite so precious about not damaging it. There we are, so we've got our first section. And that will get glued on the top. I will probably carve that to make it a lot more kind of damaged so uh, just kind of go along the top and break sections off it to make it look damaged because that's what I need so that kind of thing and I'll do most of that off camera but something like that and then that will be able to sit on there and it will give some kind of cover and you'll also be able to have some out just shooting through but the first thing that I'm going to do before I work on that to quickly show you is just start in here and again it's just damaging it really it might seem a bit strange that you spend time making something and then tear it to pieces but when you're making a uh, when you're making a ruin that's exactly what you need now i want to have some i want to have make it so that there's nowhere to stand so i'm trying not to do it so that it'll be too uneven but i do want to have sections pulled out and uh, and make it look a little bit kind of rough and ready so i'm going to carry on doing that I know that the sound is not very nice, so if you're watching this and it's hurting your ears, apologies. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to rough this end up here. So I will slice here and here and here and make it so it's a bit more stepped. And then the last thing I'll do is finish up the top, which I'll continue doing this. And then we'll glue it in place with the same kind of um, technique using the, the uh, grabby glue that I use. And, uh, and then this one will be done, be ready for texturing. And I'll bring you back when I come to look at this because I've got some thoughts about this. I am going to cut a section out here and a section out here, so I might just leave it with three and it might end up, because uh, what I want to have actually is an archway. So what I might do is, uh, is build an archway which will allow me to connect these two together and have a, an entrance in there, so have an archway. So maybe what I can do 
is cut that here and here and then have an archway in the middle. So I'm nattering away, I'm going to stop rambling, I'm going to get on with this, but I'll bring you back when I come to work on this section and look at the archway. So yeah, it's good to, good to crack on with this. Oh, so I've made some good progress here. I'm working on the archway now, or the entrance into the arena. And as you can see, what I've got is I've got two sections cut out here and I've got my little bridge section. I'm going to make use of the cocktail sticks as well, just to reinforce this join. And I'm going to make use of the same glue to glue it together. So we will stick this on and then the next step is going to be doing the bases of these actually because then I'm going to start to actually work on the texture and hardening. This is going to be, as I've said, a, a gaming piece so I absolutely need it to be bulletproof more so than my normal stuff. So my normal stuff is just just for me obviously. So, uh, so yeah, so I need to really make this solid. I'm going to make use of um, modeling compound from Luke um, and various other techniques. But yeah, first thing is, let's glue that bridge together. We have a nice entrance. We have a small section here, which uh, will be set on a base. And we have the large section here, which is the, the main section. Hopefully this isn't going to be too uh, imposing or bulky. Um, personally, I quite like it when a table is broken up quite a lot by uh, and where there's some avenues or movement is is encouraged by the terrain I don't really like it when it's just open and you can um, and you can just do whatever you want uh, this is bottom table anyway so uh, so it doesn't matter as much um, but yeah they, this is the these are the three main terrain pieces that are going to be part of this board um, and part of this table and then there'll be various other scatter terrains that I'll be doing over the next couple of weeks and months as well because I do actually have six months or so until I have to deliver this to James uh, so I've got plenty of time it's good to get started though anyway I'll let that dry and I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it you climb into the treehouse good girl keep going up you go and then you sit down that's it well done and then you climb onto it properly. Can you climb onto it properly? Yay, tree house. Do you like your tree house? Yeah. yeah. How good's that? Oh, you've got leaves up there. Yeah. Oh, that bad cough of yours. There's your tree house. Yay, I need to go up there and clean it, don't I? It's dirty. Never mind. Because it's made with old wood from the roof and it's never been cleaned. Good girl. Well, hey! Look at you! Very cool. Alright, just be careful of that little hole there. I'll fill that in. You can step over it, it's okay. It's just there wasn't a bit of wood big enough for it, that's all. Good girl. It's okay, I've walked around with it and I'm big and fat, so you'll be fine. Of course you will. Come and see me around here. Come and step over. You're okay. Here. There you go, you see? And you can sit down at this end now. And you can look at the lovely view across the valley. Isn't that pretty? Where's Gizmo? I don't know where Gizmo's gone. Did he run away? There we are. Say ciao ciao. Yeah. Ciao ciao. You're with your bad cough. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to paint this, these walls, these cardboard walls that we added. So here's your paintbrush. And wait a second, because you need some water. So let's grab the water. And do you remember how to do this? You get your paintbrush a bit wet. A bit wet. And you get some paint. And then you paint it on here. That's it. You just cover it all with that grey. We need to paint the whole thing. Okay? Paint. The whole thing. Paint, paint, paint. 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 paint.
garden. More paint. More paint. That's that it. Side. And then put it. Just spread it on. And we're going to cover the whole thing. All of it. I'm going to do the other side. I'm doing the other side. And when we've done this one, we'll do the other wall together as well. Okay? So just paint away. Very good. Oh so yeah. It's nice having you back hobbying. More water. A little bit more water. A little bit more paint. Very good. Wow, you're doing a very good job there, love. Your poor little cough that you've got. Wow, good work, love. There's some there's your paint, keep going. Yeah, but when you do, when you do, it's right there for you. Good girl. That's it, perfect, very well done. That is so carefully done, I'm very impressed, Rosie. Look at that, well done, who? <laughs> There we are. Keep going. A bit more paint on your brush, maybe. No. Huh? A little bit more paint. That's it. Good girl. Perfect. Very good. Keep going, there's a little bit more to do here. Just up here. Let's get a bit more paint. You probably need a little bit more paint, love. A bit more paint on your brush. No, not just water, paint as well. That's it. So, better way to do it is to be like this. Yeah, not from the sides, up and down like that. Yeah, well, you do need to learn how to how to listen. <laughs> I've no idea where you get that stubbornness from, Charles. Oh, can you do it? Well, have you had enough now? You're doing so well. I'm really impressed, particularly with how well you did those crenellations. It's okay, don't worry, because we're going to paint that tomorrow. We told you that, didn't we? Yeah. That's why we're not painting it today, because that will dry, and then we'll paint over that tomorrow, and it will all be fine. Perfect. Good girl. Good girl. You've got a little bit of a bad cough, haven't you? Right, there's just a tiny bit you missed there. But you have done that so well. That is awesome, Rosie. Well done. Right, so we'll do the other side as well, but not on camera. Say, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well done. It's lovely having you back, Hobby, with me again. Real missed you. <laughs> well, there we are. A week. Pretty focused on Rosie, which is always a good week. And making that treehouse <laughs> last weekend, it was a bit crazy, but uh, it was a lot of fun. And as I said when I introduced that section, it's something that I've been thinking about for a while. Rosie loved climbing that tree. Um, used to sit in it last summer um, and she has been up into that treehouse several times including the extended period I spent with her yesterday like I say where we sat and uh, looked at the view and just had a great time. Uh, her first comment when she saw it when she got home was but where's the house? <laughs> so uh, children know how to uh, how to def deflate us don't they but uh, it's still awesome um, and of course 
Uh, when I do more of it, I will bring that to the channel as well. It is part of my creativity uh, and I do love sharing the things that I make. So other than that, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Uh, editing it has put a smile on my face, as you can see, um, and that's a real benefit of this channel. And you guys and girls watching this really do inspire me and help me to keep going. So thank you so much to all of you for, uh, for all your support and for continuing to watch. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for that. I'll stop rambling now. Um, I'm going to go and do uh, some more hobbying and uh, can do a little bit more chores around the house as well. Uh, and I'll be back next Sunday for another vlog. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. And I'll wrap up, as I always do, by saying if you or anyone you know is directly or indirectly linked uh, or impacted by the uh, horrendous war in Ukraine, then my thoughts do go out to you and anyone that you may know. Uh, and to everyone, please do stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.